Hello, my name is Lisa Roberts and I make animations. I'm going to show you some animations I've made and some simple methods you can try. First, a bit of background. In the late 1990s, I taught animation in Tasmania. A student called me an interactive author. I could relate to that. I create in conversation with people and with places. Years later, I made this animation in phone conversation with Indigenous Canadian scholar Sean Wilson. Growing and sharing knowledge. I drew, as Sean spoke, about his work in learning and teaching. We came up with an idea that I then animated. The animation shows the circular, non-linear, non-hierarchical nature of Indigenous storytelling and education. Recently, in a phone conversation with Indigenous Australian engineer Kat Kutai, we came up with this logo to reflect our shared experience of two-way learning and teaching. The blue spiral signifies flows of Indigenous knowledge that come from lands and waterways. The orange grid signifies colonial frameworks opening up to two-way learning and teaching through Indigenous cultural practices and the scientific method. Estuaries depend on freshwater inflows to regulate them ecologically. Their health is not just dictated by their internal water quality, but also their connections to the surrounding catchment. As freshwater inflows transport resources to estuaries, preventing them may have ecological consequences. With the transport of organic matter and nutrients downstream to estuaries by inflows, algal and microbial growth is stimulated. A key organism in transporting these food web resources through the food web are these zooplankton, called copepods. I have found that in an unregulated estuary with natural flows, seasonal temperature, algal growth and adult copepod populations are all correlated. However, in a disrupted system with reduced flow, I found that seasonal temperature, algal growth and adult copepod populations did not correlate. While the mechanisms driving these differences are not fully known, freshwater inflows seem to be a key to the ecological health of estuaries. As you watch and listen to animations, imagine how you might answer these questions. Who are you? Where is your place? What's your purpose? Who can guide your learning journey? For me, animation is a language for listening and responding to country and to people, and for sharing and growing knowledge of relationships known through the scientific method, Indigenous cultural knowledge, and personal experience. By country, I mean the world I am a part of. Earth, sky, water, fellow creatures. By relationship, I mean connections between all things that can be known through measurement, observation, experience and the arts. As I speak, I'll show animations made using different materials and methods my aim is to inspire you to tell your own stories of relationship in your own ways, in your own language. My learning path evolves from growing up in Victoria's Dandenong Ranges with Aboriginal and Colonial Australian arts, working with climate scientists in Antarctica, 
studying Aboriginal cultural arts at Eora College in Sydney, completing a PhD, Antarctic animation, that resulted in animated primal forms that combine scientific data and subjective responses. Everyone's learning path is different. People use languages and methods for learning that are available to them at different times of their life. Methods I use involve drawing, painting, tracing, dancing, brush, pencil, body, clay, stop motion, motion capture, digital manipulation and editing. Me and Ray had, a, uh, had, this, had this concept with the old brain and I uh, believe that when you, particularly when you were doing um, more um, like you're tapping into your, into your subconscious and uh, doing perhaps strip, you know, um, doodles. He was really into doodling. I make both improvised and planned animations. Improvisations can express individual spirit connection. Planned animations can hold information that's accurate as far as can be known with all the information we have available. Improvised animations can capture feelings of connection you experience. They can't be too planned. So I set up situations that invite play. I start improvising, open to surprising myself, open to making a real mess of things, open to something emerging that has a life of its own. That's when I know my work is done. can involve drawing storyboards and maps and writing scripts. Storyboards, maps and writing scripts reflect linear thinking and categorising. They're used to guide storytelling that has a beginning, a middle and an end. 
Cruel Sex is an animation that combines both planning and improvisation. As I traced, frame by frame, the first known video recording of the complete mating dance of Antarctic krill, Euphosia superba, guided by feelings of connection to these creatures. Animations are increasingly being made for learning and passing on knowledge shared by people entrusted with traditional cultural knowledge and by people who practice the scientific method and publish their findings in peer-reviewed journals. Before digital media technologies, collective knowledge endured through stories told on country, animated or brought to life, in drawing, dance, music, song, and more. Indigenous arts continue to reflect physical forms that are unique to places where the stories come from. Today the challenge and the opportunity is for two-way learning to grow and be shared worldwide. Digital media arts offers technology. However, it's the time and resources that are necessary to bring together people whose combined skills, knowledge and goodwill can embed into mainstream education, two-way learning on country, physical and virtual. Bradley J. Mogridge, a descendant of the Kamilaroi Nation, Centre for Applied Water and Science and Institute for Applied Ecology, University of Canberra. An appreciation of Indigenous water values and knowledge is becoming ever more important when managing water resources across the Australasian region, Australia, New Zealand, New Guinea and some neighbouring Pacific Islands. The Australasian region is culturally diverse and includes people from Australian Indigenous, Melanesian and Polynesian cultural backgrounds. Indigenous knowledge has emerged over millennia of adaption to natural climate regimes, agricultural, industrial and urban development, and government policies. The region also includes a wide range of colonisation histories, democratic traditions and governance, which have contributed to a variety of ways in which Indigenous people have been engaged in water policy governance and management. Access to water is not only managed by a diversity of mechanisms, including treaty and settlements, native title and land rights, but also includes situations where Indigenous people have been excluded from access to traditional water places, to water for sustenance and water as an economic resource.
Okay, so the water is going like this in liquid form, and then when it freezes, it locks up. Thank you. And look at that section, otherwise you never find it. Okay. I just found it by accident. Now the Technologies I use are mostly free. For example, the software I use to make this video is KDN Live, an open source program you can download free 